Hello, and welcome once again to Lost in Criteria. I am the Adam Glass, and as always, my associate. John Patrick Overtired Dorgan. John Patrick Overtired Dorgan. I need see, I said it right that time. Hey, you got my yeah, name usually, right. That's, that's awesome. Usually I mess it up. We've known each other for how long? Oh, <laughs> who knows? All of eternity. Watching Summertime, a 1955 movie uh, directed by David Lee. Um, it is a not to be confused with David Lynch. Not to be confused with David Lynch, uh, who, is, who made very, very, very different movies. Um, <laughs> I was really hoping you were going to say similar films. <laughs> similar, similar films. It's very easy to confuse David Lee's movies with uh, with David Lynch films. Uh, this one in particular stars Catherine Hepburn, who, as you may know, is in almost all of David Lynch's work. Um, <laughs> did you make a mistake or did you do that on purpose? I, I, no, no, I, I, I did that on purpose. I was trying. Okay, I just... was trying to bring a little bit of whimsy into this pat. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. And imagining Catherine Hepburn in any David Lynch movie is the, is awesome. Is the definition of whimsy in my mind. All right. <laughs> I have a very twisted definition of whimsy, okay? Yeah, right? Yeah, I think you're, you maybe need some help. So, this, uh, this 1955 Catherine Hepburn movie, uh, Catherine Hepburn, uh, you know, just middle-aged, very solidly middle-aged Catherine Hepburn. Um, yeah, being very, very middle-aged. Yeah, and, and, which is good, so. because she's supposed to be middle-aged in this movie. Uh, she yeah. sing, plays a single middle-aged uh, elementary school secretary, or as she calls it, a fancy secretary. Uh, from Akron. We don't know what yes. that means. From Akron. I think I meant hooker. Maybe. Maybe. The way she says it, it's possible. But, uh, the way she seems to fear sex, I doubt it. <laughs> no, yeah. This takes, uh, she is supposed to be from Akron, Ohio, which, uh, is kind of, uh, a downer. Really the first point the first, of contention for the entire film. <laughs> the first film. problem with the movie. Catherine Hepburn from Akron, Ohio. Cat- well, how far away would you say that you and I lived from Akron, uh, Ohio? Maybe, maybe an hour and a half at the very most. Yeah. I doubt it was even that much. She sounds like she's never been within a thousand yeah. miles of Akron, Well, Catherine Ohio. Hepburn always, uh, her accent uh, is very much this sort of New English bureau- or aristocracy thing that doesn't actually exist. Um, though I guess I can't say that it doesn't actually exist. Uh, it probably does. I just don't, uh, interact with it. But the sort of people... Yeah, we've never encountered anybody with that the accent. The sort of people who weekend on Martha's Vineyard and go to all of the Yale games. Um, especially when they play Harvard. Maybe they belong to a yacht club. Yeah, I mean, obviously they belong to a yacht club. <coughs> but that's, Sorry, that's the accent Catherine too. Hepburn has. Uh, and, and she tries to hide it. To try to but sound like really someone from Akron, yeah, and and so well, she but she doesn't really try. She really she, half asses the entire. She affair. tries and that's a little. One bit. of the things that bothers me the most about the film, yeah, is that like there'll be one word in ten that sounds like she really studied hard to make it sound like it was from Akron, Ohio. Yeah. So there'll be this one word in ten that just is totally out of place with her accent. She could have just said, "I'm from Akron, Ohio," and used her normal accent, and everybody would have just been like, "Okay, okay yeah." That works. I have no problem with the weird French accent speaking French guys who are still speaking English in every single American uh, war film. Yeah. It's fine. I, I Just say where you're from and then use your normal accent. It's fine. Yeah. Um, she doesn't do that. And it's not fun. No, it's terrible. Yeah. That is, that is one major issue I have getting into this movie. Um, because, you know, I love Catherine Hepburn. I really do. She's she's a great actress, uh, and she's wonderful in so many movies. And in this movie, she uh, she's still a great actress in this movie. Don't get me wrong; she acts it's very well, and it's 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 sort of yeah, her acting is believable. Uh, yeah, and this movie this movie she plays a really uh, really uh, subdued sort of character uh, in that she's kind of a prude, um, or at least well, not necessarily a prude, but very much accepting of her lot as a uh, as a single woman. Um, and it's, it's... Basically, she does a really excellent job of capturing the personality of people from yeah. Akron, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than, but no, not the accent. Not the accent. 
Now, maybe she does have a sort of Midwestern-y sort of sense. Yeah, her her sense of what's right and wrong yeah. is very Midwestern-y. Right. And, her, and her attitudes toward Venice are, in a lot of ways, yeah. very Midwestern-y. Yeah, the character... It's just the accent is weird. Yeah, yeah. And she's... Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Completely. Um, yeah, it's Hartford, Connecticut. She is such a weird, <laughs> yeah, right, right. weird accent. Yeah, but, like, I mean, her acting is very much matches what I would imagine somebody that time period from a oh, single yeah. woman from that time period from Ohio going over to Venice well, what, would be like. One of the great her. things about this movie is is her characterization. Uh, we get the other, we get the Midwestern couple that's also there that she meets almost immediately yeah. as they're on their way in. And they're very much the stereotypical bombastic um, they go to a they go to a museum and the wife is amazed. There's thousands of paintings, all done by hand. Um, yeah, right. It, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas they're, they're purposely over the top. Yeah, Catherine. They're fine. Catherine Hepburn is trying very much not to be her, that that, <laughs> that stereotypical Midwestern American in in. But in yeah, Europe. but it's totally believable. I mean, there yeah. are people who go yeah. and are that, and then there's the people who go and da- try desperately yeah. not to be that, and, 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 but are still obviously yeah. tourists. And in that regard, she, uh, you know, she doesn't have the travel agent. She's on her own, kind of. She's staying not in a main hotel, but in uh, essentially a bed and breakfast that that this mm-hmm. widow has converted her house into. Yeah, so I like her character. I really like her character. Yes, I do. Um, and and you know the accents iffy, but I really like her character. Um, I really like, and, and you know every every character in this movie is really good. The couple, you know, they're they're annoying, but they serve their purpose. They're supposed to be annoying. They're a little one dimensional in that regard, but they're periphery characters. Uh, not everybody can be fully fleshed out. You know, they're not main. Characters. Well, and they're they're just supposed to. Yeah. they're. They're really supposed to be, um, they're, they're, I mean, but that's what they're yeah. for. They're, they're there to provide contrast. Exactly. Exactly. And that, I mean, they don't need to be people. Yeah. And everybody, every, <laughs> they, everybody. And they, well, and they, and they actually get a little bit better as the film progresses. There is a little bit of even character development in mm, them. That is true. By the end, they are, the, the husband is much more accepting of the world, of the place he's in yeah. at the end than he was at the beginning. No, that he is actually true. enjoyed his time in Venice. That is true. That is true. Like, he goes from, which I want to point something out that I think is really funny. Um, uh, he um, goes from calling it WAP food, which yes. I want to yes. point out that I'm not <laughs> sure, and then everybody gets offended, but then I, re- I realized something while I was listening to is like, as soon as I heard it, I was like, but that stands, as far as I know, is an abbreviation of without papers. Yeah. Which makes it an entirely American racial slur. Yeah, yeah. Which would mean that I would think to an Italian person mean nothing. Kind of, probably. Um, right? Yeah. No, it would. Like, everything I know about that is that it's uh, it has its origin in like yeah, it would one do, of the major immigration waves into the United States from Italy. I, I, and has, I don't know the widespreadness of the term WAP. Um, well, considering it's not even that widespread in the United States at it, this point. Yeah. I would, I would, uh, yeah. But it's certainly meant as a characterization moment for him to call it WAP food. Um, and then, yeah. you know, he gets into... Uh, and and it does a good job of characterizing him, but it also is like... Yeah. I think it should have... Everybody should have just, like... It should have not gotten as much of a rise, because... Probably. I, I don't know. It's just because, like, I was like, wait, why does the Italian lady know this word? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's basically my was my problem with it. I was like, huh. Yeah. Hepburn in this movie, she's got a lot of great, great lines. Uh, she's a very charismatic character, but she's also very clearly lonely, sad, and self deprecating. In, in you know, yeah, yeah, she's charismatic, but she also does a pretty good job of coming off as like not yeah. aware of herself yeah. as much. Like yeah. she's not, yeah, she's has not very much confidence. Yeah, it's it's weird so. actually. Um, the the McElroys, um, I think, I think one of the one of the issues he comes to accept uh, he comes to accept uh, Venice where they are, but he also accept, the way it's played and it's not it's not dwelled on at all. But as they're listing the places he they've been, 
he's really excited when he mentions Paris. And Mrs. McElroy is its the only one she's not excited about. <laughs> so maybe what it is is wherever love is in the air, Mr. McElroy is really happy. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. That's it. I didn't think about that. Yeah. And that's the, and those places are the places that Mrs. McElroy is is not so keen on. So uh, may, yeah, some. Uh, oh, that's an interesting dynamic I never considered. Yeah, no, it's it's it definitely it, it adds a little bit of subtle humor to it. Just the way because she she's like really excited. London and and. Uh, Venice, uh, not Venice, wherever else they went. Vienna, I think. Oh yeah, they and went everywhere. They, they really did everywhere. And and she's all <laughs> she's all gung ho about all of them. And then he says, and Paris, and she's just, eh. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh. yeah. So <laughs> I don't... maybe she's maybe she's racist against French. Maybe we don't. Maybe know. it's possible that despite all of their characterization of him, he's really into culture. Uh, so Paris. Yeah, where he's like, I get to see the Louvre. Yeah, Paris and Venice have all the culture, and she's not. She's just not into it. Um, she's like, ugh, more, more paintings. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, but but no, on on uh, on Hepburn's characterization, she drinks her bourbon straight and quite drinks quite a bit of it. Uh, but yeah, that's my only one of my only problems with this character is she's almost an alcoholic. Yeah. No, she's never drunk in the movie. Well, she certainly, no, but she, she certainly drinks, drinks enough that she should be. Right, and I mean, it's an issue just because that's the one part of the persona that doesn't match the Midwestern yeah. stereotype. The, the, not the shit. I'm losing my train of thought here. Yeah. It, it's the only part that doesn't match with the place she claims to be from. Yeah. In her acting, is like, ooh, I don't know about. I don't meet a lot of. I don't think you met a lot of single. You know, middle-aged women from that area from that time drinking straight bourbon. Yeah, she's like, yeah, smuggling bottles of bourbon into Italy. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's a weird character piece. It's a, it's a weird part of her character. Yeah, no, it's true. I guess it's it makes true. her unique. I guess. Yeah, but, and I think I think maybe that that lends to her her subtle out. I mean, the self-deprecating is kind of a kind of a subtle outgoingness too. And she's always, you know, she's always offering to spend time with the other couple. She frequently invites herself to be the third or the fifth wheel in a situation. Um, but yeah, the self-deprecating humor I really like. There's one line uh, I, I made a note of. Uh, somebody tells her that in Italy, age is an asset. I think it's the owner of the uh, of the bed and breakfast or whatnot, the hotel. She's yeah, yeah, at. yeah. That's a, it's says, in, Ita- that walks in Italy. In Italy, yeah. in Italy, age is an asset. And she says, "Well, then I'm loaded." <laughs> It's, yeah, yeah. It's a really funny line. It's, it's, it's. Yeah, like her, like yeah, she does a great job, and yeah, there's some some good writing points. Yeah. in the film, but I tend to agree with some of the other analyses that we've seen that there are some major problems with the writing in the film as well, though. Uh, like uh, I, some of them talk about uh, sort of a lack of cohesion and like sort of abrupt. You know, Maybe. transitions and stuff. It I is, can see I can see where they're bit. coming from. That there were I felt that way sometimes when I was watching. Is that it was a little bit. Sometimes the writing could have used a little bit more. I think I think one one aspect of that. See, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I got this from it, and since I got this from it, it it it's justified. Anything's viable. It's justified. It's fine. Just say um, it. It seems to me that in the first half of the film, especially, um, while she is still clearly sad and alone, she is the only one who's kind of winning in her freedom. Everybody else has some amount of failure in their lives. The Midwest tourists are a childless couple. This is their first time in Europe, and they're in, like, their 60s. Um, the artist and his girlfriend. The artist, you know, she's, she's talking about or maybe it is his wife. Anyway, she's talking about uh, how great he is. Yeah, that... He had a show, and he said, "Well, I had a few pieces. It was four years ago." And he's not just being modest. He's he's being realistic about yeah, his he's, life. Yeah, he's a he's not a working artist. Yeah, at this he is point. not a working artist. the The widow who owns the place. Um, everybody's kind of got this this certain amount of failure. Yeah, but I mean, the widow who owns the place seems she like a happy woman. Yeah, she is happy, and she's she's I mean, also you know, she's a widow, but yeah. she's 
also says that she likes her job. Yeah, and... she's Italian, though. And the, and the whole premise of movies like this, uh, and this is maybe the pinnacle of the form, is, is this Americans don't know how to love, so they go to Italy or somewhere else in Europe and they learn how yeah, to love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so the fact that she's she's the happiest out of anyone is, is certainly there. But we do have Hepburn going to learn to love. <laughs> I don't know. The love story, I guess, does feel a little bit rushed, especially... Especially well, much. and that's a, that's my point is that it just it doesn't. It was hard, not as easy to buy into. I like I, you know I told you this before, and I, I'll tell you I like this kind of film usually. Yeah, I like these sort of older romantic comedies, these Technicolor romantic comedies, and I I really do. And this one just didn't feel quite up to form. Maybe. Maybe. In the love story. I mean, like, I really do. I'm a sap for this kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I enjoy them. I think maybe uh, one reason but... for that is because she's so unsure of herself. And she plays that really well. Like, every time every time she's... Um, when she's first interacting with the shop owner, uh, every time that anyone seems to, you know, be interested in her or showing interest or when she's unsure of a situation... Um, she puts on her sunglasses. Even when she's inside the shop, she puts on her sunglasses to go inside and then talks about, you know, how much you want for this, blah, 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 before she even realizes who she's talking to. She's already unsure herself and wearing the sunglasses. So she's trying to she's trying to hide, and you don't usually get that with these sorts of romantic comedies. Yeah, I guess that's true. And Or, or you're actually more likely to get it from the male character than the female character in these kind of films. And so... Yeah. I guess that's true. It's a little bit unconventional in that way. Yeah, yeah, and maybe that's maybe that's where it's striking. It. Well, and I guess that it's also possible that that also is what leads to it feeling a little rushed, is because we have to take her from that yeah. to like madly in love with this man, and that's a bit of a further leap than usually you get in these kind of films. And they start that with a really, really, I think, uh, inadvertently and uh, accidentally silly moment uh in the shop after they they know who they are uh that he was the guy sitting at the cafe staring at her um he convinces her to take off her glasses and as she takes off the sunglasses there's this really swelling harp music that's that's obviously this oh they're in love now sort of (laughs) sort of key that doesn't doesn't work with the story up to that point um and, well, it doesn't work with the story from that point. I mean, yeah. their, their their love is not that instantaneous, madly in love yeah. love. You know what I mean? It's, this, as yeah. far as some parts of the love story, their 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 love is actually pretty believable. Yeah. Uh, in certain elements, like I mean, they don't. It's it doesn't start as head over heels right from the beginning. Yeah. And, that, and I kind of like that part. But yeah. Well, I think I think if it had been more head over heels, all the way out, there'd be the justification, and there is, and and still there is a little bit that this is summer love, it's vacation love, it's how right. it's how Stella got her groove back love. Um, yeah, it's it's you know it's, Make it's some more it's references. Short. It's, no, I was hoping you could like pick out some more movies no, like that. It's Darn. it's 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 short. It's it's. You know, so I guess I, in reality, we kind of need, you know, I didn't, I didn't actually put that together until you said that. That yeah. like that's the whole idea is that like this is summertime and it's summertime love. Yeah, it's it comes and goes with the summer. Yeah, I didn't put that together. Thank you, Adam. You're um, but in that situation, yeah, I'll it should be way more. It should, it should be it should be way quicker. It should be. Yeah, yeah. Violently, madly in love from the beginning, and then. And As we, the season yeah, changes, yeah, we kind of. I think we kind of get that, but but then at the same we time, do. it doesn't it doesn't really pass away because of the way it ends. Um, right, right, right. Because they're still very much longing for one another, and it's just cut short, and we don't see any any aftermath of that. Any, you know. Um, well, yeah, but I'm glad for that. I don't. Yeah. I I don't want to see. But that's you know. I even, don't really want to see what happens after this. Even that is, they're kind of torn apart at the end, and and that's you know, it's summer love. Vacation's over, summer's over. Go back to school. Um, yeah. Go back to work. Whatever. Get out of it. Um, 
you know, so it, it, it works within that. And I, I think I like this movie more than you did because I was I was thinking of it I in didn't, that. I did not dislike this film, but yeah. yeah, no, I think you did like it more. I wasn't thinking in that term, Yeah, in those terms. I was thinking of it as more like, I kind of approached it the way I approach most of these kind of films, where you kind of expect it all to work out at the end. Yeah. Because that's the way these films end. I mean, yeah. like... Everybody knows it's the way these films end. It may not end with the people you thought who were going to... Yeah. Wow, that, this sentence just got really complicated. But it may not end with the people you originally thought would be together being together. But everybody ends out... Usually ends up... Yeah. It all ends up working out. But and but this one does because if you think about it in terms of this is summer love, that's the point. It's supposed to end this way. Yeah. Yeah. This is how summer love's supposed to end. Vacation's over, so is the fling. Yeah, and and in that regard, but you kind of feel bad for Catherine uh, Catherine Hepburn's character Jane Hudson. Yeah, Jane Hudson, because she falls in love with this man, and then the summer ends, and so must the romance. But at the same time, you don't really think it should. Yeah, she has no real reason why she needs to go back to Akron. No. No, that is you true. You know what I mean? Like, that the, is true. When, when you see what she's going back to, it's kind of like, uh, why? Yeah. Why is she running away from this? If she's going back to be a fancy secretary, uh, it's not. Yeah, I mean, you this know. man, why not stay here with him? But at the same time, this could be a life-changing moment for her. Um, yeah, we don't know what happens after. Yeah, so. since we don't know what happens. Maybe she, you know, she becomes the president of Harvard after this. Well, the, the, no, that plays... That plays into the whole, uh, the sort of stories telling this, this, you know, go to Europe and learn to live sort of, sort of story is, is, you know, a lot of, the aftermath of that in a lot of movies is people coming back and, oh, it's so exciting and wanting to live a better life and whatnot. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe after this she's a lot better off in Akron than she was. I, th- I think this could be very much be a life-changing moment. One thing we haven't mentioned, though, yet, and we really need to, is the fact that he's married. Yeah, he is. Um, which, I, that's not touched on until, you know, that's kind of that reveal is is the climax of the movie. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, he meets, she finds out that the son... Or that it's his son was the shop boy. Yeah, the, the shop boy. Is and that he's visiting son. the daughter. Uh, and and she says... She's really subtle about it. I really like it. So how's your mother? <laughs> instead, of saying, instead of saying, are they divorced or, you know, blah, blah, blah. She says, so how's your mother? And he says, oh, she's fine. You know, she's not dead. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So Hepburn, very, obviously very angry at that. Um, you know... She's, uh, yeah. Um, how do I, uh, I don't know where to go from this, but yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and then, and then I'm not going to lie. I kind of zoned out at this part, Aww. which is unfortunate. Um, but I never was quite clear. And I even rewound and watched again a little bit, but was never really quite... I, I know he explains that they do not... Yeah, he doesn't really explain it but well. It, but that's my problem, is that's one of the points where it really falls apart for me a little bit, is that, like, he explains that we don't spend time together, we're not really... It's like, we're yeah. married, but we're not married. They're not... Like, but they're how not... did this click in Catherine Hepburn's character's head is it's okay? Yeah, exactly. Because because, exactly. like, again, she's from Akron, frickin' Ohio. That is one problem I definitely have with this. You know, no matter how much he tries to explain that they are not husband and wife in the sense that an American woman thinks of, well, a 1950s American woman thinks of husband and wife. Um, they are still husband and wife. They are still husband and wife. And there's no, she accepts that way, way too it's, fast. It happens too easy, yeah. And yeah. That, uh, that's a major problem for me, yeah, like. This is this is she's coming from a time in America that is supposed to be pretty much its at its height I mean, of uh, prudishness about this. Yeah, kind and of we stuff. romanticize that a little bit nowadays, but but, but even still, still, it was still yeah, yeah. The fact that eighteen well, minutes, I'm not, yeah, eighteen minutes of er, not eighteen minutes, but a very long amount of this of this film got cut because the uh, the, the censor board 
didn't like the pro adulteryness of the movie. Right, um, and it and even with all that being cut, it's still uh, pretty yeah. pro adultery. Yeah. It's, no problems it's, with it's the no problems with the eight year old boy lighting up a cigarette on screen, but Oh well this is the pro adultery. Cigarettes are, cigarettes are good for you. Yes. Um she runs into the artist's wife who's in tears and I guess maybe that I don't know. She's maybe the entire the acceptance of it, it's very rushed, but it's very much this sort of, well, this is Italy and it's how it's done sort of thing. Yeah, but I'm not um, sure how far when in Rome goes. Yeah, yeah, I don't... For yeah. anybody, but especially for a... Yeah, I'm not seeing... A, a single woman traveling on her summer vacation who works at an elementary school who obviously is at least shy and nervous about the topic of sex. Yeah. I'm not sure how win and Ro- how far win in Rome do as the Romans goes for yeah. her, and how easily it can happen. Yeah, she mean because because basically her acceptance hinges on she runs into the artist's wife and she's crying about how no one loves her. Then she walks in and the artist and the hotel owner are talking about how they're having an affair. Um, right, but that doesn't seem to like pile on positive attributes to yeah, exactly. adultery either. Like, exactly. I mean, obviously the, uh, the, the, uh, the artist's wife is just yeah. terribly distraught over this adultery. And it's like, so Catherine Hepburn's character's takeaway is, oh, uh, it's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, well, obviously it is. It hurts somebody. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And she doesn't, she, she walks away from, the second encounter there, where she sees she sees the artist and the widow, and she walks away from that with this, I don't know. Suddenly, she doesn't care about the fact that he's married, and you know doesn't think about how she's you know possibly actively hurting his wife. In, in yeah, what because she does. like yeah, like she he gives all these things, but we don't see the wife's perspective. We don't know. Maybe she still is desperately in love with her husband and. Her husband just goes around town cheating on her with random tourists. Yeah, yeah. We don't really know. Maybe and that's, that's what a happens. bit upsetting. Yeah, and win in Rome, destroy a family. Yeah, and and even he's very, you know, when he's explaining it, he says that you know he doesn't live with her, but she's not. But they're not divorced. She doesn't have lovers. It's just what he does. Um. I think that may have been like a a um, wink to the censor board thing, though. It was like, oh, but the wife, no, yeah. no, 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 she doesn't do adultery. Maybe, maybe it's a man's game, you see. Well, I mean, just because, like, I, you know, you know what I mean. No, no, that no, I mean, one one side of that coin would be way more upsetting to a, a censor board than the other yes. for some unknown reason. No, certainly true. Certainly true. Guys can do whatever they want. Uh, after all, it's their nature, right? right. <laughs> Cavemen, yeah. all of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just very weird, the pro and it, it message in this movie. <laughs> well, it's really weird how quickly it develops. It's like yeah. a lightning strike. It's like, and we go from her being very uncomfortable with this idea to, bam! And maybe Let's it's go my, out on the town every day. Maybe it's my own Midwestern sensibilities that it's we, possible. maybe I need to spend but, a couple um, of but, weeks but, in Venice. But, 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 like, I, okay, I'm... I, I'm not going to talk about Japan. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just going to tell you that, like, I spent enough time here, and even I'm still upset. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I'm, I'm not upset because of the infidelity itself. I'm upset because the character development is not logical. No. No. That's certainly true. That's certainly true. That one element of the character is really... But unfortunately, that's the element the entire film hinges on. Yeah. B- so you because, can see why critics would go, Ugh, this is a bit... Yeah. And because I mean, that, after, that, after that, we immediately, they kiss, and then they have this whole world world romance, wind-up toys for some reason, uh, everyone <laughs> laughing. Um, I love those wind-up toys. I desperately <laughs> want some. Such a ridiculous scene. I, I love it, though. It's yeah. because, because I could totally buy into it. The, yeah. You know, you're... If, if there weren't the adultery element to it, that would be a really heartwarming romance scene. Yeah. Yeah. No. 
It's it's them having fun together. Um, but then layer over the adultery and the. There's just, fireworks as they kiss. She leaves her shoe on the balcony. Uh, tastefully implied sex scene. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, very tasteful. Yeah, it's the it's the highlight of the 1950s American cinema. The 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 slow uh, tilt up of the camera as as the couple enters a bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Oh man. It's classic it's, filmmaking. Yeah, no, it's very it's a very stereotypical thing at that point. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah, I definitely understand that specific part of well, And I, even I my just justification think that's a pretty major yeah. plot. Yeah. I mean that's a I mean that is the film. Even justifying the love story as being summer love. Uh, the hinge of the film is the fact that he's married, and she accepts that. We kind fast. of gotta wonder why. Yeah. I and understand that that's probably that might be in the original play, and yeah. it's an adapt an adaptation of that play. But I'm sure they already lobotomized the play anyway. It's this, this yeah, is Hollywood, sure. yeah. um, so why not just cut out the adultery? It's not yeah. really super necessary. It, it would be if they had developed her character more over time to deal with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then it would be very necessary and an important plot point, but at this point, it's not, really. It provides this conflict. I mean, I'm... But it's... The way... It, she's not conflicted about it. Yeah. She's not... At the it. end. She's conflicted for, like, five minutes. Yeah. The way a modern movie would deal with this sort of thing Montage. is that... Well, <laughs> that's a different sort of... The oh, way a sorry. modern movie would deal with our problems with this is that we get a shot of the wife being a, being a mean woman. Yes, um, and that wouldn't make it any better, but it would... It wouldn't make it any better, it. but, but it's, how, it's how modern, modern cinema tries to, uh, tries to justify this sort of thing. Um, but I feel so like that, modern cinema does that because they really want to have a, a film in which... Two people, probably both of them are married, fall in love, and that's sort of that unlikely love scenario, right? Yeah. But the problem is, is this one, the adultery element is not necessary. Yeah. No, you know what I mean? So, like, in those kind so of films, true. it is necessary because the whole point is that they are both trapped in a situation where they don't want to be, and they fall in love, and they want to be in, they want to be able to be together, right? That's the whole idea yeah. in those kind of films, right? So they, we get establishing shots with, like, the wife being a really mean person. Maybe the husband on the other side is an alcoholic or something weird like yeah. that. Or, you know, just stays at work all the time. I don't know. Some excuse, right? And yeah. then that establishes the fact that it's okay because both of them are in loveless marriages, right? Yeah. But this one, you would have had almost exactly the same film without it. Yeah. And and the main problem with that is that uh, we have to we have to trust him, right? Because the no only description of his married that. life we have is his description, and even his description doesn't lead us to justify well, his actions. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it's like wow, you're still a. And then maybe yeah. this it maybe this feeds into some, uh, uh, perception of Italy at that time. Yeah. In American culture that we're not able to tap into because we do not exist in that time in American culture. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's maybe. some, maybe there's some, as far as an American audience at that time is concerned, established fact about Italian people. Italian men being the barriers. Well, I, mean, I, I mean, like, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. But, like, yeah. it, obviously it's not necessarily true, but... It's obviously something that maybe these people at the time believed. So that leads us to maybe there's some information that we don't have. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Because otherwise, it, I mean, without that little piece of information, there, it, like I said, the adultery element is more of a distraction than it is anything else. Yeah. No. You're absolutely right there. Um, it's... That's one of the problems with the movie. But at the same time, without the adultery, there's no reason for them to suddenly not go through with it. And then the whole... Well, but I don't get the impression that she's not going through with it at the end because he's married. Yeah. Oh, you at mean the... at the beginning? Well, yeah. But, yeah, but she's from... She's a... But she already does a good job, a pretty good job of establishing herself as a kind of prudish character. 
There's yeah. no reason why that woman who we meet at the beginning of this film would just jump into bed with the first Italian man she meets. Yeah, that is true. That so, is true. like, I, there's no need for her to have any other reason other than the fact that she's not a hooker. Yes. Um, and so, like, we get back to the fact that really it's not necessary and it's kind of a distraction. And then at the end of the film, like, it's not the reason why she decides to leave. Yeah. And so it's like, ooh, why why is this element in this film? Again, like, if, if they had established it more and built it up more as a major plot turning point that develops more slowly, it could have been interesting. But because she she finds out about it and gets over it in the course of 15 minutes? Yeah. It's really just weird. Not to yeah. say, but I mean, the rest of the film's fine. I mean, it's an enjoyable love romantic comedy type of film of that era, but with this really weird element thrown in, like, for no reason. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's needless. It really is. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the rest of the movie is affected by that, um... But but yeah, you're you're right. She's not she's leaving because it's time to leave, not because right. She's leaving because it's time to leave, not because it's uh, her problem with adultery. And then at the beginning, she's not sleeping with him, not primarily because of a it's adultery, but because she's generally uncomfortable with the notion anyway. Yeah, like that's the whole idea of these romance, like these like these kind of short burst love films, you know, where it all happens so quickly is that, like, the the man is supposed to melt her heart or something yeah. like that. You know, she he's supposed to get her to relax and accept that love is okay. So, like, you get that element in these kind of films without the adultery element anyway. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. It's, no, I think, it's I think just a right. weird thing yeah. about this film that makes it not quite as good of an example of this genre of film as it could be. Yeah. But no, nonetheless, it's, a... it's well acted and it's it's a fun, it's a good story. It's enjoyable. It's just weird a little bit. It's, it's weird. You know, the reason he doesn't show up until he's too late at the train station, it's not really... Because she's, she's obviously, she's waiting for him. Yeah. And she wants him to be there, but... She's got to go, because it's the train. Trains don't wait for Americans in love. Something I've learned, personally. Aww, um, and, no, um, wait, not, that's, that's not true either. I've never been on a train. <laughs> I learned it entirely from young Frankenstein. I've been on a train, too. Uh, I'm so full of lies this morning, I know. Um, you are a liar. I'm a lying liar, liar, I, Pants. <laughs> like, this, is, this podcast could take a really weird turn. It's like... Yeah. You're a naughty boy, Adam. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so there's no reason for him to be late. Uh, maybe maybe the implication is he ate breakfast with his wife. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, Yeah, no, there's no... Yeah, we don't know. Maybe he, he had to stop and buy that thing. Yeah. I mean, maybe, I guess we're... Maybe he's... Maybe, there's, like, maybe we're into some sort of racist thing about Italians always being late. In 1950s and 60s cinema in America, who knows? I think maybe maybe we're we're trying. I like to my reach racist for, angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you keep that racist angle. You, you racist racist man. I don't think I'm being no. racist. I think I'm more just assume everybody else is. Well, yeah. There you go. Um, anyway. Which is racist, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> or at least incredibly xenophobic. Yes. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, so, so he rushes after her, and I guess for a moment, we get this, you know, it was all fake all along anyway, and he's not coming to say goodbye to her, because he's just going to move on to the next woman. Um, you know, I didn't read into it like that at all. Yeah. I, I miss, I mean, like, I, I should have, but I didn't read it like that. I was just like, oh, she said goodbye, and... It's over, yeah. and he's not going to come because he doesn't want to break her heart. Yeah, and you know that's 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 how that's I read. An okay, that's an okay reading too, and you know mine's mine's a much more cynical reading. Yeah, but at wow, the, you're a but cold at the same bastard, time, Adam. Yeah. 
yeah. That's why I'm single and you've got a kid mm. um, and a wife. I, I guess I should. <laughs> no, yeah, I have, I have you could have a kid actually. without without being. In love. <laughs> I guess you could have a kid without being being in love. But yes, no. yes. Um, it's anyway, definitely possible. <laughs> Uh, not in my understanding of reality. Well, and certainly not if you have a trifurcated uh, cervix. Well, no, but that's a different movie. Oh wait, oh, I'm getting um, confused. <laughs> please don't confuse summertime and dead ringers. <laughs> oh, it's, it's very... so terrifying. Oh, yeah. let's not do. Let's not talk about that anymore. Yeah. Anyway, um, so so you know, in my cynical view of of that last scene, uh, suddenly you know, I'm disproven. When he shows up. Right. That's really interesting. It's like we read that yeah. completely different. Like for me, like I knew he was going to show up, obviously. But like at the same time, like I was reading it as he was really like, in my head, I had a picture of him not like really trying to decide if he should come and say goodbye to her because like he doesn't want to make her hurt her. But at the same time, yeah. he desperately wants to see her one last time. That's that was the scenario in my head. Yeah. And so he decides at the last minute, I have to see her one last time. That was the scenario in my head. And that's, you know, that could that could be read. Yeah, I and, thought, well, the movie doesn't tell us anything. Yeah. So. And she looks dejected, and it could be just because she's sad that he's not there, or it could right. be because she, like me, has, has realized, or, or at least right. thought, that, <clears throat> that, you know, this was all, this was all a ruse. And yeah, they just, leave it up to our interpretation a lot. Yeah, there. and then he shows up, and and obviously I'm I'm wrong when he shows up, um, because it wasn't. It's he's brought the flower that she likes, and she's he's trying to catch up to her to say goodbye, um, but he doesn't. <laughs> but he's too late, baby. Oh, no, he's too late. I I'm guess gonna... I guess the love was real. Yeah, and I was really kind of hoping he would run into the pole at the end of that. Uh... <laughs> Was, am I the only one who felt that? I, 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 I really felt he probably should have. I really wanted it to happen. I was so desperate. I was like, I was yes, waiting yes, for it. He's yes. running. He doesn't care. And I know it would totally ruin the theme of the movie. It would like totally be out of character for the film. But I yeah. wanted it to happen so bad. I, de- I was waiting. I was like, oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And it didn't well, happen. when we when we make a parody of this movie, it'll be the exact same movie, <laughs> except for except that one end. scene at the end. It'll be totally yeah. that one minor difference. Um, yeah. Here's the other problem. <laughs> this okay. probably this is a really weird thing to be nitpicking about, but it really drove me nuts. The way she waves at the end, what the hell? <laughs> is she on a Miss America float? <laughs> That's just how Catherine Hepburn waves. That's how you wave in Hartford, Connecticut, you see. I don't know. But yeah, but she's from Akron, Ohio. Um, no, it's it was really like that really threw me off. I was like, What? Nobody waves like that. Not when they saying goodbye to the man that they fell in love with or something like that. It's, it's, it's so like Especially when you're supposed to have been have fallen in love for the first time in your entire life. Yeah, and like where's the frantic like goodbye, I'm gonna miss you so much wave. Instead you get and yeah. Miss, oh, you know Miss Ohio in her. Waving you know, like, like the queen. I can't think of any way to sound like a, but yeah, it was yes. it was a pageant wave. It was a, it was weird. It really threw me off. Maybe I'm the only yeah. one. I did, but I was like, when I was watching, I was like, really film. Like whose acting decision was that? But that was my, yeah. that was, that was a sour note at the end for me. Between the no pole running into and the wave, I was like, oh man, film. Yeah. You really uh, let me double, down at the end here. Double whammy of let down right at the end. Well, uh, you know, I would have accepted if the train platform had somehow been on the water and he had fell into the water or something, something like that. Yeah. Or run, run right off the end. Well, because, like, actually, you know, I, I've i realized that, yeah, I actually realized that that wouldn't be entirely out of the character of the film. No. Because if no, he had I done like something it. silly like that, and then she, her last memory of him is kind of laughing at that. And she's laughing her, her, while she's waving Her last eye. memory of him is that he's so desperate to get to her. Yeah. That he's not paying attention to anything else that's going on. Yeah, and, like, she, and he gets to wave goodbye from the water or from, like, sitting down on the platform after he bumps his head and... Yeah, they're waving goodbye, and she's got a smile on her face. It, that that would be oh, that would be touching. Never mind, that's not <laughs> out of character that. at all. 
<laughs> I like it. I like it better. Yeah. I just wrote a better I think ending he, to this film. No, I, I think he should have run off the end of the platform into the water. That's, uh, I, even that's what I'm thinking. Was, the even though there was like some sort of train yard between the platform yeah, Whatever, the man. Like, this um, is Venice. Yeah. There's probably a canal. Venice. They can put the canals anywhere they want. Yeah, I've right. never been to Venice. Um, I've seen that yeah, one. Uh, I've seen that one James Bond film that takes place in Venice. You know, that's all I know. <laughs> the scene from the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. There you go. That's uh, all we need. Yeah, we we know all there is to know about Venice at this point. Between this movie, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and James Bond. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Best probably. part of the film, though, firemen yeah. and boats. Yes. And she really likes that, too. Yeah, that's right who wouldn't like that? That was wonderful. I was like, that's great. She's got... That's her very Catherine Hepburn laugh. That's where she first starts to break the uh, break the Akron accent, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first eight seconds of the film. Yes. Hey, like five minutes. Okay, yeah, they were on a train before. Yeah, but five minutes of it, of a 100-minute movie. So, it's yeah. pretty... It's not. It, it might as well be eight seconds. Yeah. It, it, yeah. This movie probably. This movie probably could have been about ten minutes shorter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For for what it's trying for being a fairly light romantic comedy. Well, if you if we slight, if we edited out all the bits that even reference adultery, that's five six minutes yeah. right there. Yeah. We'd probably be fine. Yeah. Cut out some of that god awful cinematography stuff at the beginning, where she's taking film of everything. Well, it's characterization. It she's is living life. But she's, uh, you'll you'll notice obviously after they start to get together, she um, dro- she ditches the camera. She ditches the camera. Yeah, that's she's true. Not, that does. I mean, that does build a sort of a through, character though. element there. Yeah. It just I I just didn't like it because like I don't know that we needed to do it as many times as we did. We didn't necessarily need to see everything she was filming. Yeah, we could, right. We that's could just I mean. accept yeah. that she's filming it. Um, we don't need to see the camera's point of view. She's like, I've, I've already uh-huh. taken, I've already went through one of these cassettes. And it's like, and how many did we go through? Yes. About six of them, I think. Yeah. I, I, I you know. It, Actually, I was a little surprised with that because I had no idea that sort of cassette based, uh, video recording existed. In well, it's on, not video. On a, it's, on a, it's, it's, it's on a it's consumer film. level. It's, yeah, but it's, it's still cassette based film. Yeah, it's interesting. I I I've yeah. seen that car- camera before though, with the with the yeah. twisty front. I was just not aware that it used cartridges. Yeah, I thought it was just like a straight reel to reel thing. Yeah, me not too. a reel to reel within its own little box. Yeah, which is actually um, really clever and if, pretty. Cool. If I take anything from this movie, it's that I want that camera. Um, actually, she kind of. Okay, what's she doing? When she falls into the canal, mm-hmm. she's recording, she's taking video of his shop. Yes. Um, which is kind of stalkery, I'll admit. Yes, but mm, um, mm, I'm fine with it. Yes. And? Where's this going, <laughs> anyway. Adam? Um, no, I was just, I'm trying to think of where that is uh, compared to uh, you know, when she really starts to get in love with him. Because falling into. Falling into the canal might be maybe Why she doesn't use the what happened anymore? was well maybe what happened was she got some sort of she got some sort of uh, virus or something from the canal and it's attacking her brain. <laughs> okay, so and she's got syphilis and it's eating yeah. away at her brain matter and making her really and randy. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and also decreasing her judgment at the same time. Yeah, it's, oh, it's decreasing her judgment. She doesn't is, care about uh, this. Is this film is just taking a really weird turn, Adam? <laughs> Well, it's interesting, actually. They shot that scene four times from what I've read, and uh, she ended up catching conjun- conjunctivitis from, from filming it, and she didn't want to film it. And the the way Dean finally convinced her to um, was that he just poured a ton of disinfectant into the canal. I think she's just and taking I have a to bath imagine... and disinfectant, which sounds awful, too. Yeah. yeah, which is a great way to get conjun- conjunctivitis, too. So, uh so maybe that's why, but but that's the reality. But maybe within the movie, she uh, yeah yeah she's got some sort of. I don't understand why that couldn't have just been done in the studio back home, real quick. Yeah, well, they had to film it on on. So I'm 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 told actually from what I've read that that Venice really didn't want them to film it there. I can't believe and told you. them no repeatedly, and the gondoliers even 
gondoliery, uh, the pilots of the gondoliers, not the gondoliers <laughs> themselves. Pilots? Um, <laughs> pilots? It's yeah, a boat. Sure. Boats I'm, have pilots. Not, I, I don't think they do. Not, yes. Pilots are the people who steer the boat. Mm. Captains are the people who tell the pilot what to do. Okay. All right? Okay. I'm going to pretend that's real. I well, Sure, I don't know anything about boats. It just doesn't sound <laughs> right. All right. Anyway, the the guy's driving the boats, not the, not the actual I'm boats. I'm going to go the with boat drivers. <laughs> the boat drivers. The gondoliery uh, threatened to go on strike when they found out this was supposed to be filming during the summer in Venice, because that's the time they make most of their money, and they thought it would interrupt their money. I, and I, Venice I finally agreed... <laughs> The city of Venice finally agreed to let them film when the uh, production company, United Artists, made a huge, rather sizable donation to uh, the preservation of uh, one of the churches in Venice. Um, so they bought they bought themselves access to that. You know, I wonder if that really proved to be worthwhile for United Artists. Um, probably How not. much money did this film make? Uh, I really don't know, and I don't feel like looking at No, I'm not going to either. Yeah. Audience at home, you can look it up. <laughs> Audience at home, carry your own. If you're way, really okay? interested, if you're really interested in the end of this train of the conversation, go for it. Yeah, but it'll be you're more interested in the end do of we, this train do of the conversation. Do we have to do all the? Yeah, do you have to do all the? Work, do we have to do all the work around here? Uh, yeah, you've got hands. Right. Use them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of turned off by the pro adultery message. Yeah, uh, but only because I don't. I don't really accept that Catherine Hepburn's character. Yeah, it's just not believable. Would, it's not. I don't. I don't. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, adultery. I mean, people can commit adultery if they want. Well, it doesn't bother me in film, except for yeah. when it doesn't make yeah, sense. Exactly. Yeah, and it just doesn't make sense here. Um, that and her accent don't make yes. sense. Yes, and we've already written a other, better other, ending. So there you go. Other than that, it's a. Other than that, it's a great. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good. Uh, it's an okay movie. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's 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 lighthearted. She she plays it well. Um, I like it. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for listening once yes, again thank to you. Lost in Criterion. We will see you um, next time. Next next time we'll be back with RoboCop, oh, uh, another oh, movie. I'm really it's really surprised made the cut here. What a great movie! Uh, and our our old friend, uh, hopefully Donovan, Donovan Hill will be with us. Should be back for us. He's he he has promised that he wishes to be. Ah, uh, it's gonna be um, great. Maybe we should try to get two guests. So, uh, Who else can we get? Um, let's talk about this. Not yeah. on a, not, uh, We could throw out a bunch of our yeah. friends' names Peter that really no one cares about. Well, yeah, we'll try to get a dead actor <laughs> to to well, join I'll us next start time to talk about like. RoboCop, a movie that came out after he died. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> Walt Disney. No, I like that plan. Let's work on this. Okay, next time, join us to watch uh, for a discussion on RoboCop with, with our friend Donovan Hill <laughs> Peter and Sellers. the actor Peter Sellers. <laughs> Thanks. Good night. Good night. and Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari-Dorgan. 
Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lustandcriteria at with2brains.com or join us on the web at www.lustandcriteria.com.